Frank Lampard's Chelsea side. Exciting, direct, youthful, you know, general feel-good factor through to the next round of the Champions League in the top four against all odds with a transfer ban. Awesome. But these results at home really, you know. Hey, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot had a good Christmas. Now, Chelsea lost 2-0 to Southampton at home. All these results at home, man. After what was a coming of age result away at Tottenham. And you know what? Chelsea were really good away at Tottenham. Tottenham weren't good. That's because Chelsea were good and the formation worked against Tottenham. Chelsea won every ball, every second ball. They were technically good. They controlled the game and they were very convincing and looked very dangerous. They did the same formation at home and lost 2-0 to Southampton. Like West Ham, like Bournemouth. All these teams that they should be winning against. Ugh. Oh yeah, if you're new to football therapy, make sure you do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications icon, that's important, help me out, like the video, let's dissect what happened in today's game. So, you know, let's open the analysis screen. Alright, next to me, you have the who scored match centre statistics graphic. Now, goal first half, goal second half. The first half of a Femi scores, you know what, it's a good goal, it's in transition, he cuts inside, he sort of sends Zuma the wrong way, it's a great finish. And you know what, even the second goal, Redmond is this, I think he had one or two chances, but this chance again on transition, great finish over the keeper. Both goals by Southampton were good goals. I'm not going to say it was awful defending from Chelsea. Chelsea can always do better defensively, especially by the second goal that switched formation. So let's talk about formations quickly. I said this before on probably this channel and certainly on social media. Remember when Chelsea went away to Wolverhampton and scored five goals at Molyneux? I think Tammy scored a hat-trick. Fick scored a wonder goal. Chelsea had what was a superb performance, scored loads of goals in that formation. After that, Frank Lampard went, oh, that worked really well, that 3-4-3 against and Molyneux against Wolverhampton. Let's use that at home in the Champions League against Valencia. I was at that game, Chelsea lost. It was the wrong tactical application. So maybe Frank had learned his lesson. But I'm having all kinds of deja vu from this match. Last time out in the Premier League, Chelsea go away like at Molyneux with a 3-4-3. Three, three. Well, I know Chelsea scored five goals at Molyneux against what is a very good, sturdy opposition in Wolves, and they are very good Wolves. But Chelsea looked even better against Tottenham. They completely nullified Tottenham. They made him look bad. Tottenham lost their heads because they were frustrated because they couldn't get into the game. Chelsea kept a clean sheet and scored a couple of goals. Superb performance. Now I feel Frank Lampard is did today exactly the same as what he did before here and wow that worked really well i know i just wanted to try it due to the opposition but we really did control possession well and look really good let's just use it again the first time chelsea were yet to win at home in any competition and they still didn't against valencia but chelsea have still been really poor at home so i feel like he was in the same frame of mind saying we need more wins at home against lower level opposition let's play this free back system to be more sturdy and just go you know go for the win tactically in the first half Chelsea got it wrong vulnerable on transition uh, conceded what was a good goal and then panicked and then you know couldn't reply in that half second half Frank Lampard does the right thing changes the system takes off a center back in Kurt Zuma and brings on Mason Mount who was excellent now Prior to this game, I was saying, mm, we're going to miss Mason Mount's high press in combination of play in the final third, and we're really going to miss Mateo Kovacic, because, you know, he's got a, uh, a suspension for accumulating five yellow cards. Both came to pass. Chelsea did really, really miss Kovacic, both defensively and how he links up the midfield to attack. And before Mason Mount come on, you could tell we were missing him, and when Mason Mount was on the pitch, everything lit up and started creating chances and was much, much better. But although, in theory, the system was fixed tactically, the naivety, the youthful naivety of this team, and I don't mean just the young players, the, the, how the team is new, and they play a sort of almost naive football in many ways, certainly when they're in that formation, very direct and just sort of gung-ho. They get frustrated and they panic, and they have great passes, a few good spells of play, and then they panic and concede and don't convert and lose 2-0. Shout out to Southampton, obviously, they had a good game last time out against Villa, they came to Stamford Bridge, they played very well, they took their goals very well, Hasselhoel 
basically managed it well with a 4 4 2. He was relatively brave. He looked to play on transition. They played obviously compact and frustrated Chelsea, but they didn't look to just completely stink out the gaff. So they deserve a lot of credit today. Especially keeping Danny Ings on the bench and then bringing him on later in the game when they're already leading. So it was very, very good from the Saints. As far as Chelsea are concerned, like I said, I will talk about player performances in just a minute, but collectively, it's that sort of psychology where everyone panics together. They go into the Spurs game, they know it's do or die. They're in like a war zone mentality together. It works. But they can't, you can't conjure that up every game in the Premier League, especially when you're at home to Southampton. Southampton are thinking like that, but Chelsea aren't, and this is a problem. This is a problem against loads of lower level opposition. Without disrespecting any teams, most, well, all teams in the Premier League are good. And I don't even want to say like, oh yeah, Chelsea definitely need to dip into the market in January, but in this first half, like I said, tactically the system didn't work against the opposition, especially, God, I'm going to say it, without Marcus Alonso. Marcus Alonso is a left wing back. Emerson isn't a left wing back. To be honest, Azpilicueta isn't a right wing back either. When Reese plays, on Reese James plays as right wing back, and Azpilicueta plays right centre back, that makes much more sense. But for them to, we were playing two fullbacks or what is Aspi this day? Is he a right back? Is he a left back? Is he a right centre back? Regardless, we were playing two players that weren't wing backs in the wing back system. Didn't work. Fair play, Frank Lampard is a pragmatist. He does change things. He wants, you know, he wants to adapt and win. He did the right thing by bringing on Mount and changing the shape. But, you know, it wasn't meant to be because really this is something that I do maintain. It's a collective failure in the psychology of players. So I wanted you guys to get your eyes on the stats, but let's get rid of this analysis screen. So there you have it, right? I do want to talk about player performances, but really, like I said, there's enough quality out there to beat Southampton. A good Southampton, a well set up, organized Southampton. Both goals were taken well and generally on transition. Kepa didn't really do anything bad in that game. I would criticize Emerson in that game, not because he did anything. No one really did anything obviously bad. Like I said, it was just like a breakdown, a collective breakdown, but Emerson didn't really impress. He looks a lot better as a left back when things are going well. We don't have enough of those clutch players, to be honest. Willian, right? Willian is a player that if he has a good first five minutes of the game and decides it's a good game for him, he'll be amazing. But because that's quite rare in the Premier League at this level, you don't really see it from Willian, you know? If he's like, oh, you know what, I feel this today, he's gonna be like a Chelsea number 10, a superb. But that's the thing, that's why what made Eden Hazard so special. How Chelsea would be poor for 80 minutes, but he'd still be able to conjure up these moments and be, I guess, what is deemed a clutch player. As it stands, Chelsea don't have any clutch players. They've got very talented players, talented players with good spirit and good attitudes, like Rudiger wants to fight to the end, as does Jorginho. Both kind of have leadership qualities. Kovacic was missed in that game. If he, you know, late on, he would have picked up the ball. He would have dribbled. We needed someone to dribble between the lines. Really, and really from midfield, to be honest, man, that game was calling out for two Chelsea players that weren't on the pitch for different reasons. It was calling out for Mateo Kovacic, and it was calling out for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Someone that can pick up the ball, be press resistant, drive through midfield, and still be technically gifted enough to combine and then hopefully convert. Both N'Golo Kante and Jorginho are excellent midfielders. I don't think there's any particular chemistry between them as a two, um, which perhaps is a developmental issue, but it's just not there at the moment. To be honest, like, I'm reluctant to criticize any player massively. Even Willian had a couple of good moments, even though, like I said, he wasn't in clutch mode because he rarely is these days. Hudson Adoy, yes, he wasn't great. He was taken off for Pulisic. He looked alright when he came on as well. But Hudson Adoy did have moments. He's this creative player that you need to hone his skills and unlock. And when everything's not going well, it, you can't expect this kid to just be amazing. Do you know what I mean? But I'm, it's one of those things that I think really genuinely is a growing pain, a teething issue in this Chelsea side because Frank Lampard will adapt. He's not stubborn. He's not too dogmatic to just try something and dig himself into the ground. Maurizio Sarri is a good coach, right? You got Chelsea deferred, granted, with Eden Hazard, but he is a good tactical coach, but he's very stubborn and he's dogmatic 
with his system. Frank Lampard will want to do what works, whatever it takes to win for Chelsea, his club. And therefore, really, he's the right man for the job. But it's not just going to happen while everyone's learning on the job. And that's both players and coaching staff. And when I say like a collective failure on the day, like Tammy Abraham, really good at knockdowns. You can tell he's so, so much better at holding up the ball, holding it up, strength, knocking it down, running. He was a little bit limbs today and fell over a few times and was probably just like, I don't know, overthinking it, getting a bit overexcited, panicking, and that spreads throughout the team. So it is a bit worrying, you know, some of the people that Chelsea are linked with, are you linked with that real sturdy player that's just gonna chill out and sort everyone out? Do you know what I mean? Willian, as a senior, you know, very gifted player as he is, he's still quite a passive character. Sure, he's very expressive on the pitch, but just because you're expressive on the pitch doesn't mean you're gonna command a team to calm down, rally like a John Terry at the back or a, a Balak or a Lampard. You know, these players more upfield. You're not going to get that from Willian. And the worrying thing is, no matter how much Chelsea fans want players like Jadon Sancho, you're not going to get it from him either. Really, fans are going to have to be patient, wait for some serious development, find a little bit more rhythm. Frank Lampard knows that he can rely on a 3-4-3 when he needs it, but there's almost this like sort of um, paranoia when he plays at home and he's just desperate to get results at home, sort of going through to the team and you know having amazing away performances winning away scoring loads of goals but they've got this like weird peculiar paranoia at home that needs to go and that needs to go from the top down but pff, all things considered chelsea are still doing pretty well and as long as chelsea learn and reflect well on what is a poor and disappointing result against a team that played pretty well everything should be okay in the end still what do you think get down in the comments below vent your frustrations tell me where you think the game went wrong what is the solution? Is it really that bad or is it just a boxing day blunder? Ooh, maybe title. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. And do go subscribe to my other YouTube channel, Yan Plays. Link is in the top of the description. Right, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby